Hey guys! Welcome back to another video. So today I'm doing this kind of like bronzy, summery, my usual, you know, colourful tutorial. I haven't done a colourful makeup look in like a little while. I was like, I miss colour so much. So I decided to whip this baby up for you guys. I did a little chit chat kind of tutorial. It's just really you guys are just getting ready with me. I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I just kind of talked along and made up my mind and decided to do this. So if you guys do enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. That really helps me out and it lets me know what you guys like to see. And also subscribe before you leave so you can join my fam and stay up to date with all my latest videos and tutorials. Otherwise, let's get on with the video. Hey guys! Oh my gosh, it's the first day of spring. I'm so happy. I love spring. It's definitely, definitely up there with one of the favourite seasons, for sure. It's such a beautiful day to film, so I thought I'd just sit down, chit chat with you guys and just get ready. I have no idea what look I want to do today at all. I think I want it to be a bit glam though. Like I do feel like a bit more on the glam side with a bit of colour because I haven't done one of those in a little bit, so we're going to do a bit of colour today. I'm excited! So let's just, yeah, get ready together. So I think I want to do the brows first, just because I haven't done my brows first in four ages. <laughs> in four ages. Basically in a hot minute, like, I don't think I've done my brows first in ages. And I was like, they need taming. They definitely need a bit of pruning, but we'll do that another day. So I'm just going to probably carve them out a bit today. So I'm just going to quickly whip through this routine because I've done it a million times on some other videos and it's nothing really interesting to see. Like, I feel like the brows are the most boring part of the face. <laughs> so I'll just fast forward through this one. I'll just do a bit of clips here and there. But I'm going to be using my Master Brow Pro palette from Maybelline in the shade Deep Brown and just using that middle shade from the palette. Just whack this hair back. Yes. Yes, bitch. Yes. Guys, I'm going insane. Like, I swear I've had this song, like, the Friday, Friday, can't get out on Friday, stuck in my head, like, literally all week, like, for the last few days at least. And I don't know where I got it stuck in my head from. Like, I cannot remember where I heard it to get it stuck in my head. It just won't leave and I just I keep trying to think of other songs you know that'll get stuck in my head so that I can get that one to leave but not nah, it's staying put like I was literally lying in bed last night just like having that song play over and over in my head and I was like get out <laughs> if you guys can hear some noise in the background don't even worry about it I've just got my Spotify playing yeah this is Definitely going to need to be carved out today. I did today. I did the worst job. And I'm just using my foundation that I'm gonna use today to carve them out. I'm gonna bother really with concealer. I feel like foundation's going to be the more you know, natural looking way to carve them out because it's just gonna fade in nicely with my foundation later. And then I'm just going to take my Brow This Way Brow Sculpting Gel to just kind of tame these hairs because they are very... I want to stick them down in place so that they don't move throughout the day. So if you guys can just bear with me and ignore that the neighbours are mowing their lawns, we're going to move on to the next thing. So I'm going to do foundation so I have a nice even base and I can kind of work off my eye look from there. And I've got a new foundation guys, it's new to me, it's not really that new. I got the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Foundation in the shade Medium Beige. And it's really good. It's good for oily skin because it's oil free. And I wore this the other day. So it's not a first impression because I did wear it the other day. And it lasted like the whole time. Didn't get all cakey and disgusting. It didn't need to touch up or anything like that. So I actually really like it. And I'm just going to apply this with my F80 Kabuki brush from Sigma. And what I do like about this foundation is it's quite like a medium to full coverage. At least it is on me anyway. And I just really like the finish of it. It doesn't look greasy or anything like that. And always make sure to bring it down your neck as well so that you don't have that line defining where your foundation finishes. And I always like to go back over any areas that I feel like need to be kind of smoothed out a little bit. Just because of the fact the brush doesn't quite create that really smooth finish that a beauty blender does so I like to buff it in with a brush because it doesn't soak up so much product and then I just lightly tap over the areas that I need to kind of blend it in a little bit more with a beauty blender 
And the foundation doesn't quite cover up all of my breakouts and things, so I'm going to put concealer on that, but otherwise it does cover up a lot of the imperfe imperfections on my skin. I love the acne scars, so I do really like the foundation. For concealer, I'm going to go in with my Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the shade Medium Moyen. And I'm just doing it like a triangle under my eyes, and like so, making sure to focus, mo focus most of the product on the inner corner. And also... Prime in my lids with this. Then I go in with my beauty blender and just blend out that concealer. And then like usual I'll grab a buffer brush for the concealer around my blemishes and I'll just buff them out a little bit so it doesn't take away that coverage. It just blends out the concealer. It's kind of using little like patting motions to feather out the edges. Oh, I freaking love this concealer. It doesn't crease. It just sits so well on the skin. Like, mm. Then I'm going to grab my Maybelline Fit Me Press Powder in 135 and just grab a dry beauty sponge with a flat edge to it. And I'm just going to pack on that pressed powder with the dry sponge on any place that I need to set the concealer or foundation or anything like that. I just love this technique because it highlights, it sets, and it also conceals any pores so it like blurs out the skin so it looks super smooth and airbrushed. I absolutely love doing this. I also set my lids down with this pressed powder as well. And there we go, that's the base done. Let's move on to the eyes. I'm actually super excited about this bit. So I've already gone ahead and done one eye, guys, off camera, just so that I can have an idea. I played around with a few shadows and I just wanted to get, like, um, the idea of how to create the look. Because I had an idea in my head and I'm really happy with how it came out. So let's move on and I'll show you how I got it. So grabbing a Lux 228 Crease Brush from Zoeva, I'm dipping into that light orange shade from the Morphe 350 palette. And I'm just going to whack this colour right through the crease from inner to outer corner. And I'm going to blow it out towards the tail of my brow to really extend that eye and create that almond shaped eye that I've got going on. Don't worry about the line not being super cut at the moment because we can just clean it up with concealer afterwards. So I'm just basically just dragging that colour through the crease and bringing it all the way to my outer corner of the eye. And see, I've just blown it out towards the tail. It's just a soft transition shade, so it doesn't have to be super pigmented. Next, grabbing a 231 Luxe Petite Crease Brush. I'm grabbing that darker orange shade from the Morphe 350 palette. And I'm just going to place this just below where we place that lighter orange shade to create a gradient effect. So it transitions down into the deeper colours. And again, dragging it out towards the tail of the brow. And also connecting it up to the lash line. And I'm bringing it all the way to the inner corner. So it's covering that whole crease area. Be mindful where you place the tip of the brush when you first get grab some of that shadow. Because wherever you place that brush down, it's going to be the most pigmented. So try placing on the outer corner first and just blend whatever product is left towards the inner corner. So that we're still sticking with that almond shaped eye. Because as you can see on this eye it's lighter and it fades into a darker outer corner. Next on that same crease petite brush I'm going to grab that Coralie shade from the Morphe 350 palette. And again placing that on the outer corner and blending it through the crease. Just a bit lower than where we placed that deeper orange because we're still creating that gradient effect. Don't worry if you get some on the lid area, we're just going to carve out the lid afterwards so you can be as messy as you like. As long as you're staying below those two orange shadows so that it still has that transition upwards towards the brow. Next, grabbing some of that light orange shade that we used at the beginning on the same crease brush. We're just going to soften the edges of those oranges so that it's a bit more softer and smoky and there's no harsh lines. Next I'm grabbing this colour tattoo in the shade Tenacious Teal and I'm just going to carve out the lid with this colour as a base for the blue eyeshadows that we're going to be applying on afterwards. Next I'm grabbing Poolside on a 232 Luxe Classic Shader Brush and I'm just going to pack this right over top of that Tenacious Teal Cream eyeshadow to set it in place and also create a more vibrant colour. Next you want to grab Neptune from Makeup Geek. It's just a beautiful royal blue eyeshadow. 
And I'm grabbing the Morphe MB16 brush. I'm just going to pack this blue right on the outer corner of my eye and just blend it into that poolside eyeshadow using light packing motions. Once you've done that, you want to grab um, Poison Plum from Sugar Pill. It's just this gorgeous deep purple shade. And I'm going to pack that on the outer corner of my eye, the very outer part, with a Luxe pencil brush. I think it's the 230 brush. I'm just going to pack that color on and blend it into that royal blue shadow. And I'm just blending it through the crease right above that Neptune eyeshadow. And just purple is just going to help that blue transition into that corally shade because it does have a red ish undertone to it. So it's good to help blend that colour into one another. And just on that petite crease brush, I'm grabbing some of that corally shade and just buffing out that purple with that corally eyeshadow. Very softly in circular motions, just touching the outer edges of that purple so as not to disturb the purple sitting right next to that Neptune shadow. Like that. And just grabbing some of that corally shade on that pencil brush and just packing it right over top of that purple to help create that a kind of pinky purpley shade on the outer corner. Because I don't want the purple to be a focus, I want it to be more focused on the blues fading in to the oranges and the corally shade. I like to use the edge of the pencil brush just against any harsh lines that may have been created just to soften them up like so so it's more smoky and soft next I'm grabbing this gorgeous foiled blue eyeshadow from Makeup Geek called Pegasus and I'm just going to pack that lightly on the center of the lid and blend it into the inner corner and also into Neptune so it's more pigmented on the center of the lid and just kind of fades out and I'm using light little tapping motions where Neptune my pool side to kind of help diffuse it and just create that soft gradient effect and I just bring a bit of Neptune back a little bit and just kind of switch between the two shadows to kind of create that soft blended effect for the inner corner highlight I'm going to go in with two eyeshadows both from Makeup Geek um, one is White Lies and the other one is Whimsical they create such a soft gorgeous like inner corner part you know what I mean? I'm just fading it in to that um, orangey blend up here. So it softly blends into the inner corner. And I applied the white down first just to kind of get a base. And then I'm applying Whimsical right over top and mixing them together. Because I want Whimsical to be mainly focused here. Whereas the white kind of diffuses Whimsical into the top and bottom lid area. Next I'm taking this Revlon Photo Ready Eye Art in the shade Topaz Twinkle and I'm just going to apply the glitter side over that inner half like cut crease right over where pool side was to get that gorgeous glitter kind of pop of shimmer in there. And there we go, we've got our little glitter cut crease. Next I'm taking this Haley Baldwin for Model Co Liquid Liner. This is from the Feline Kit and I'm just going to create a nice wing right where that deep purpley blue shade is. So I'm kind of following that as a guide towards the tail of my brow. I'm not doing anything too extravagant. I'm just going to do your kind of your usual wing I guess. And once I've done my wing I want to clean up the edge just a little bit. So that's nice and crisp like this line here. So I'm just grabbing a little eye concealer brush and some of my foundation. And I'm just going to really carve out that line. Next to tight line, I'm grabbing this lip liner from Colourpop in the shade Bull Trick. It's just a black lip liner. I don't recommend using a lip liner in your waterline guys, especially if you have sensitive eyes. I'm just using it because it's nice and pigmented. Because I just feel like I brought the shadow up a little bit too high around this area. I'm grabbing this light cream coloured eyeshadow from the Morphe 350 palette. And this contour shader brush, the 235 from Zoeva. And I'm just going to kind of clean that up a little bit. And there we go. Now time for mascara and lashes. 
So the mascara I'm going in with is the Argan Wear Mascara in black. And then I'm going in with these gorgeous Attitude lashes in the style Fluffy. And this is what the lashes applied. Oh yeah, don't they just look so wispy and just so beautiful, especially with this eye look, they don't cover it up. Mm, I'm in love, I'm in love. So let's finish off the eyes because it's so easy, like there's barely anything left to do. So what I'm going to do is grab a nude coal liner. This is from the Models Prefer. And all I'm doing is placing this in my waterline to open up the eyes and make this more of like a daytime wearable look as well. So it's not black in the waterline, it's nude. Mm -hmm. And boom, the eyes are just so much more awake. Next, I'm going to go in with that light orange shade that we used at the very beginning. And I'm placing that right underneath the waterline with a Zoeva pencil brush. Just for like a soft little wash of colour and give a bit of de definition back to the lash line. Because the nude can kind of make the lashes look a little less there. Kind of doing their thing. So I'm just bringing it back a little bit. So it's just a little wash of colour. Nothing too crazy. And finally grab your favourite bottom lash mascara and coat those bottom lashes as heavily as you would like. Finally, to finish off the eyes, because I forgot about the brow bone highlight, <laughs> I'm taking Mary Lou by the Balm and placing this on my brow bone to finish off the eyes. Girl, I am digging this lighting right now. Like, oh, it's making the eyes make, like, it's really showing their true colour. Like, the blue so vibrant, so is the orange. It just gives me life. Let's move on to the contouring. Actually, I am so excited by contouring today. I don't know why, I just really feel like contouring. Some days you do, some days you don't. What can I say? Sorry about the noise, I'm just cleaning up my little work area here so it's a little less messy. <laughs> but oof, I'm living for these eyes. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So contouring, I'm going to do my usual NYX contour and highlight kit and grab that tan shade from the palette. I'm just going to warm up the cheeks, you know, the usual areas I guess. And because this is like a, like more dramatic look it can be a bit more dramatic on your bronze and contour and things like that that's why i love dramatic looks just for that reason because i can be really sculpted and it doesn't look overdone well in my opinion it doesn't look overdone always make sure to hit that jawline and kind of like bronze the bottom of the chin a little bit just because it makes the chin look a little bit shorter if you feel like you have a really long chin and you want to make it kind of like more shorter face if you feel like you know that's a insecurity with you or you just want to change your face shape a little bit bronzing the bottom of the chin or contouring will help you do that and if you have a big forehead bronzing your forehead will do the same thing it'll make it appear smaller or less round or you know whatever you're going for so because I want to be really radiant and glowy, I like to be controlled glowy. So that means like I don't like to have my oils looking really glossy and making me look greasy. I like to apply a lot of glow to my skin in a controlled way. I'm going to go in with the Wild and Radiant Bronzing Palette. And I think I might take the last time I used it, I used all four shades. I thought it was a bit much, like it was a bit dark on my skin because I'm not that tan at the moment. But I think I might go in with the more... Like it's like a tan shade, like a goldeny tan shade, and mix it with this lighter shade, just these two here, and just kind of like whack it on the high points of the bronze. So I'm giving a nice glow and a bit of colour to the skin as well. Because I don't know if I'll do blush today. I feel like the eyes are you know, being the biggest statement. I don't know if I want to do a bronze, like a um a blush, and just kind of hit right a above the brow bone because when you turn your head you have that natural glow right above the high point of the brow so you want to hit that area too and I hit the bridge of my nose and of course the tip kind of creates a more lifted nose so it doesn't look so long and you know and of course on my little cupid's bay and on the lip so it just makes it look fuller so when I apply lipstick on top, it's got that glow underneath and it just brings the lip forward so it looks more full. I don't have the biggest lips in the world, so I just like to kind of give that little imitation that they are fuller. To like sculpt out the cheeks a bit more and also my nose, I'm going to go in with the sculpt shade from the highlight and contour kit from NYX. It's just a nice cool toned brown. I'm going to bring it up the side of my temples too. So I just like to hit like the bottom part of the nose, do a little like 
C shape under there to kind of give a shadow so it makes it look shorter and sculpt out the sides a little bit too. Next I'm taking this gorgeous Moon Gleam and Star Glow highlight from my Violet Voss palette and I'm mixing both of those and applying it to the high points of my face for a really intense glow. I think it might give a bit of blush just because it is kind of like um, a more, like it is a very summery bronzy look. But I do want a bit of colour to the cheeks, I think. So I'm going to go in with my usual peachy shade and apply this to the cheeks. I think it will tie in really well with this gorgeous eye look. And it's quite a natural colour on my um, skin tone. Yeah, I do quite like that. Just applying it between the bronze and highlight. And to finish off for the lips, these very glowy lips, I'm going to go in with a nude, I think, today. Because I don't know what I feel like. Nothing too intense. I think I might just go in with my usual clear message because it's such a gorgeous staple. Like it just like it's a brownie nude, like a brownie tone nude, so I really love it. It ties in with a lot of my summery looks. But first of all, I'll lip line with my natural shade from Rimmel in this number 049. Then I'm taking clear message and just gonna whack that baby right over top of that lip liner. And to finish off this makeup look, I'm setting my face with the Urban Decay All Night Out Setting Spray. This baby will literally help your makeup to stay in place all day, all night, whenever you're wearing it. It literally will not move. It's amazing. And this is the finished makeup look, guys. So before I wrap up this video, I want to give you guys a big thank you. I'm absolutely, like so filled with gratitude for all of you guys. Your comments have been so wonderful in my last few videos and you've been such a big support. My subscribership is just boosted. It's incredible. I still can't believe it myself. I'm so grateful to every single one of you guys who have joined my YouTube fam. I'm so blessed to have such a great supportive like family behind me in YouTube. So I just want to say a big Thank you to you guys. I just feel so much love and support from you all. I just want to share my gratitude with you. So this concludes my makeup tutorial for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to please give it a big thumbs up so that I know you like these kinds of colourful, summery, like just fun looks and these chit chat kind of tutorials. And if you guys have any requests or suggestions on what you'd like me to do next, then make sure to let me know via social media or comment down below. All of my social medias will be linked in the description bar if you'd like to check them out. Otherwise, have an amazing day, guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.